Hello everyone, I'm Sean with Backflow Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Today I'm in my stock room back at a sink. Um, we've got an assembly that's hooked up, a Wilkins 975XL that was brought in by a customer this spring that said it was leaking and he didn't know what was really wrong with it and he didn't care, just wanted to leave it with me and uh, bought a new one. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to hook it up, show you what it was doing, and then uh, how to troubleshoot it and what we would do to fix it. And unfortunately, I've done that already, and the video, video wasn't as good as I'd hoped it would be. And as I was editing it, I thought, maybe I ought to try and do this again. So this is round two to see what goes on with these backflow assemblies. And I may have to cut in the first video to show you what was going on with it and maybe some other little clips from it. And I don't know how well this will turn out. Just keep in mind that my day job is, is selling backflow assemblies and helping you uh, repair them, selling you the right kits, not in videography or editing and posting to YouTube. So bear with me and we'll go through this. Okay, so here we are with the assembly. I've had to play around with it a little bit to try and get it to do what it was doing before. So I found an old disc of another poppet that was left here and believe it or not even had tears in it, uh, deep gouges, and it still worked. And so I amplified those those gouges and it's doing pretty much what it was doing when he brought it in. Only when he brought it in it was because of rocks that were in there that had dinged the rubber. But we'll go we'll get to that. Now I also want to show you this neat little tool that's for shutting the ball valves on and off with. This may be more for you contractors out there, but you just use your socket set, uh, put it in there, and you put it on the handle, and you just rotate it. And these are pretty stiff handles. This makes it very easy. So <clears throat> let's turn this on, and you'll see what it was doing. So can you see and hear the spitting that's coming out of this? Right here. Now this isn't even as bad as it was before I started this video. But that's still bad enough. You wouldn't want that going on. And so one of the things to figure out, is it the number one check that's causing it? This is the number one check. Is it the relief valve that's causing it? Or is it... Uh, some back pressure coming on, which isn't very common, especially with a lawn sprinkler system. Now, the way to troubleshoot that is you can turn on a sprinkler zone, and the goal is to get as much of a flow going through it, or more, actually more, than what's coming out of the relief valve. So just turning a zone on should take care of that. Now, if it's just coming out a little bit, you can open up the number four test cock. So there's four test cocks on here. There's three on the main part of the body and the one closest to the outlet shutoff valve is the number four test cock. So we're going to open that and see if it gets it to stop leaking. And it does. It stops it from leaking out of here. So that tells me that the problem's here. If that did not stop it and it didn't change how much was coming out of here, then I would know that I would have a problem here in the relief valve and I'd need to take this apart and do some investigating. If it slows it down, the drip coming out of here when this test cock is open, then there's a problem in the number one check and the relief valve. But today we know it's just in the number one check. So what we need to do from here then is to turn the water off to the, to the system. And since mine's just on a sink, I'm just going to turn it off with this hose bib. You would probably just use this inlet shutoff valve, make it easy for you. Now most of the water drained out of there, but I'm going to open these test cocks anyway to make sure that there isn't any more pressure inside the backflow assembly while I go to take this cover off. So this cover has, underneath it, is a spring, and it's nothing that your hand can't handle. And oftentimes, all you have to do is, is start getting that loose, and you can do it with your hand. And you'll want to be able, as you're getting close to the end of the, end of the threads, 
to just hold it with your hand. So it's not too bad. And so the cover o-ring right there and the cover comes off. Then we take the spring out and then we have the poppet. And you can see the dings that I put into it. Those are significant dings. Now this is the one that came out of it originally. And I'm trying to make sure that you can see those little dings where the rocks were sitting and they're right here. I hope those show up. So at that point what we can do to make sure that that's the problem is we'll take this disc out. Just unscrew this screw here. Pay attention to how this washer comes off because there is a right and a wrong way. One side is beveled, the other is flat. And you want the beveled edge up underneath the head of the screw and you want the flat edge down against the, um, the disc. And you just take that disc out and so you would just take this and flip it. If you can tell that it hasn't been flipped because there's not a ring from it sitting against the seat or any other imperfections, and this is okay. Sometimes these get cracked and broken. There'll be little fractures underneath of them, either from freezing or from water hammer. But this one's okay. Now, originally, this washer also was bent. I could spin this disc in here, and that shouldn't happen when this washer's on there. And like I said, you want to find the edge that's beveled, which is this side, and the flat edge goes down against that disc. And I, I just pounded that flat. Uh, just put it on the back of my vise and pounded it flat. Put the screw back in there and tighten it down. The other thing that this uh, poppet assembly had was it had some green corrosion around here. And so I cleaned it off and when I cleaned it off, I just used my thumbnail to scrape it off. And you just want to use something that doesn't have uh, much of a uh, abrasiveness to it to clean that off. I even used the edge of my straight screwdriver, just laid it on the edge to scrape it. And then I also finished it off with a towel just to get it clean. And because this stem rides up into this guide in the cover, you want to make sure there isn't any corrosion inside of there or little. Um, there is a little bit of corrosion in this and again you'll want to use something that doesn't have much of an abrasive factor to it and just work it or you could try using some vinegar in it and let it sit until that green corrosion has gone. But the point is that you need that poppet to move up and down freely in this cover. If it binds you could get a restriction in your flow and it may also hold it in the open position as that corrosion keeps holding, uh, growing and you'll have a leak going through there. I've seen this before where you can't even get this poppet out of the cover. Um, but th now that that's done, uh, that's good. And you don't ever want to put lube on this. Sometimes homeowners and even some contractors will put lube on this stem and that will eventually get build up in the top of the cover, it'll plug off this hole and you'll notice that there's two little holes here on the on the bottom of the poppet and those are to be able, once that goes up in there, water's going to be trapped and it pushes that water up against the top of the cover here and it goes out through the bottom of these holes. So that's important that that works right. You never put lube on this disc you only put lube on o-rings that are being pushed or twisted into place like on this cover o-ring. And I rarely use it on covers, but I do on other parts that are being pushed and twisted into place. The other thing that we want to take a look at is the seat. Inside this assembly. And I'm going to see if I can show you this here down inside of here. Maybe I'll have to hold a flashlight. You can see that there's a black seat that's down in there. And that's just plastic and it threads in. Sometimes there can be a problem with that seat. It can get a nick in it from rocks that are coming through or other debris. And all you need to do to check that is 
use your fingernail, not the pad of your finger, because that usually has too much of a callus on it to fill the imp small imperfections. But your fingernail should catch all those little nicks. And that way you'll know if that seat needs to be replaced or not. And I'll show in another video how to take those seats out. Um, you can also look down and sometimes you'll see a crack that goes straight down the seat. Other times it goes around the circumference of the seat. Uh, so you can't tell if that's cracked or not until you take the seat out. But now we know that seat's okay. We'll put this back in there. It just sits in there. It kind of guides itself back into place. And then you'll put the spring back in and the cover. Just press it down so that it goes over that poppet and hold it in place with the hill of your hand and start turning it until you start to get a bite on the threads. And then you can turn it a little bit easier. And because of the O-ring sealing it, all you need to do is a little turn to get that to seal. Now you also want to make sure that when you open those test cocks, turn them off before you turn it back on. The purpose of these angled is so that I don't get hit in the chest on this video. Uh, typically they'll have a straight adapter coming out of them. And these are used, just so you know, for testers to test these assemblies. They're supposed to be tested after they're repaired um, and when they're put into service. So now we've got those closed. We've got the outlet shutoff valve still off. Um, you'll go to turn yours on from here, but I'm going to turn mine on with the hose bib on my sink. And we got an initial spit which is not uncommon as it pressurizes and it'll balance the inlet and the outlet pressures. And so now nothing is coming out of this relief valve. It's completely dry. So this homeowner, if he would have given me a call or done a little bit of investigating work himself, even he could have stumbled on it. He could have been so lucky just to take the, pop it out, see that rock, brush it off and be good to go and could have saved him some headache with taking it out and saved him a couple hundred dollars uh, to replace it. But that's all that needed to be done for this one. And so that's where we'll end this video tonight. And uh, like I said, I'll come back to this assembly. I'll show you how to take the seats out. And there's a couple different tools for that. And if there's any other things that you want to know about that's on this assembly or that you run across, please post it below. Ask me some questions. And also, I would encourage you to click the subscribe button and click on the notification button so that you're notified when new videos come out. And I'm, I'm going to try and get better at that. Like I said, this is not my uh, day job to do videos and YouTube, but this is something I'm learning and I have to learn the software as well. If I was 12 years old, I'd probably pick it up just, you know, just like that. But um, anyway, thank you for your time and your comments. Have a good evening.